It is the first installment of the Matt Rodriguez show. I appreciate you taking the time out to come and just check it out if that's what you're doing. And if you're a friend of mine that's supporting, I really appreciate that even further. So this is the very first episode and I have no idea where I'm going to go with this. But I knew I just needed to create in the audio space, not because, uh, maybe because it's becoming extremely popular. I gotta be honest there, but I always enjoyed podcasts. I listen to them all the time and just the concept of being able to sit down and tell the story or talk about your experiences and how much, you know, I've been impacted by other people's podcasts and, and stories and knowledge. I figured it wouldn't hurt to do the same and also just gives you know clients and potential clients more insight into me as a person beyond just you know a video maker Uh, so you know I run a wedding photography and videography business along with my soon-to-be wife Uh, we have been doing a really good job this year and growing the business I'm really proud of us I'm really proud of her and you know, that's that's uh, something I really enjoy doing. Fun fact, I actually filmed my very first wedding in 2010, all the way in 2010, I know. And I created a highlight reel and all of that. And at the time, it wasn't something that I necessarily wanted to pursue, but I, I was already into cameras and video. So it seemed like the logical thing for me to do when this person was having a wedding and, you know, it was a small wedding, very simple. And I figured, hey, why not? They don't have anyone documenting it. So let me just do something. So I uploaded to Facebook and, you know, it got shared a bunch of times, but I've since have had a new account. So I don't know where that video is. I think I have it backed up on an old hard drive, which needs to be recovered. I keep forgetting to do that, but I have tons of footage on there from back in the day, from my dancing. I first got into uh, cameras in general, just like the, you know, taking pictures and videos. I first got into cameras and documenting in, I don't even remember what year it was, but it was a long time ago because I did it to document my training as a dancer, as a break dancer. I've been break dancing longer than I've been making videos. Uh, That was a huge part of my life. And it still is. I still do dance to this day, but it's not something that I focus on in terms of competitions. You know, it was something that took me around the world uh, competing, you know, by myself and with teams, you know, representing the USA and, and, and myself, of course, and my crew. But, you know, I still plan on doing more things like that. But right now, what's what's more important to me and what's really excites me now is you know, building my business and videos. So that's what I'm doing. But I have dancing to thank because if not, I wouldn't have gotten interested in the visual arts. And, you know, that's really how I got started was picking up a camera to document my training because, you know, you have to stay on point. You have to be able to look back on your practice footage. It's kind of like sports, you know, when they... They film the practices, film the games, and they go back and they run the tapes. Okay, no, you, you missed that play, or you didn't do this, you didn't do that. It's the same concept, same exact thing, and that's what I was doing with my dancing. So that's kind of the origins of when I first picked up a camera. Also, sidebar, this is like the th- second time I'm filming this thing, because the first time I went on a tangent, I didn't have any notes, and I kind of just bounced around. I went from filmmaking to philosophy and that was no bueno. So here we are. I have notes. So if you see me glancing back and forth, if you're watching this on YouTube, obviously, if you're just listening, then good for you. You don't have to look at my face. So, (laughs) all right. So aside from the wedding stuff, I work with commercial projects, you know, commercial clients in the real estate space, cybersecurity space, and the social media slash influencer space air quotes if you didn't see that on spotify so more notably the most recent person that i've worked with in that space is andrew schultz now if you don't know who this guy is you need to do your googles jump on instagram jump on youtube he has a podcast 
with Charlemagne the God. If you don't know who that is, then you must have been living on the rock for the last 15 years. Their podcast is called Brilliant Idiots, and it's hilarious. I mean, it is what it sounds like. It's a lot of political stuff, a lot of intellectual mixed in with ignorant and funny things. <laughs> so, it is one of my favorite podcasts. So when Andrew came to town, you know, I, I reached out to him and we started working together. But I'll get into that in a, little, in a second. I kind of wanted to go more into uh, how I even got here. So 2018, incredible, incredible year. Uh, I kind of want to go over quickly just a timeline of how that happened. Um, I went from being a part, working a full-time job, being a, a part-time filmmaker to jumping and going all in. Now, I think it's important to note that I did have a job prior to just jumping in. Also, another side note, I it wasn't planned for me to jump in. It kind of just happened because I got laid off in January 2018. So I started the year getting essentially fired. I have no I have no problems in saying that. I have no issue uh publicizing that there's nothing to be ashamed of uh, people get fired all the time sometimes things don't work out now I started the year off being laid off and at face value it's it's like this rejection no one likes to be rejected no one likes to feel like they're not good enough for whatever the thing is um, but it ended up being a blessing in disguise because I had to had a choice to make right do I go back let me go find another job and stay in this cycle that I wasn't even happy in Or do I really try to do it for myself and go hard and see what I could really do pushing it full time, right? Uh, Full time on on, on my stuff, right? My business ideas. So I decided on the latter, obviously. And here I am. You know, it's now Christmas of 2018, Christmas time. Merry Christmas. Uh, And it'll be New Year's before you know it in a few days. So the year's pretty much over. Uh... So my first, I'll jump into my first client, which was actually my barber, <laughs> my barber and his barber shop, right? So it's the barber that hooks it up, gives you that, that, uh, believes in you. And I appreciate that like tremendously. If you're watching this, bro, thank you so much, bro. So I wanted to, uh, create some promos for them and do some other pieces. We did, we did several pieces in 2018. And we actually have things in the works for 2019. So that's an ongoing project in general. Um, Now, I really want to talk about the first cold client, meaning like the first person that I that I brought into my into my uh, ecosystem that wasn't via a referral, wasn't like a friend, wasn't, you know, those are considered warm leads. Right. This was a cold lead. Like I I literally jumped on Instagram. DM them and we work something out and bam, we were in business. So, you know, the, the road to that wasn't as simple as one, two, three. It was more like me sitting days on end on Instagram, sending out copy and pasting a, a response. And if you don't know, if you do that, you will get marked as spam for a, a certain amount of time where, where you can't uh, private message people anymore for a while. So, you know, that. So anyways, I searched the local hashtag, right? I would well, local hashtag is basically wherever you are, you search the hashtag. It gives you everything that was posted regarding that hashtag or with that hashtag. You go to recent. I always go to recent. Scroll, 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 and I was looking for businesses to to engage with, right? Not people, just in businesses. So, well, people are businesses, but you get what I'm saying. So, I found uh, this real estate company, and I was like, whoa, hmm. This guy's legit. Like it, he's engaged with his audience. I could, he has he posts stories. He posts an Instagram post every single day, which tells me that he cares. He cares about content. So that's also another thing. When you're qualifying a lead, you need to also sort of make sure they're in line. Cause just cause sometimes it's easier to deal with people that already get it. You know. So I saw that he got it. So I DM'd him immediately. Didn't expect anything because I had sent out like God knows how many messages that week. And he replied immediately. Said, hey man, come meet me tomorrow at this job site. 
and we'll you know we'll we'll have a meeting we'll talk about it and see what's going on so boom i show up we we talk for like an hour in his car uh and two weeks later we're filming uh we decided to go with a weekly vlog episode uh 52 week project which he we recently spoke and he wants to extend it for another year and we're not even done we're only at 42 right now going on 43 and that's been a challenge Produ- you think these youtubers that are producing content every week twice a week that's work it's a lot of work you don't you don't just you don't especially when it's more like uh well researched content especially right but even like doing things on the cuff like just staying on schedule because we have a schedule and we stick to it. we haven't missed it not one day we upload every day on tuesday at 12 noon every single week do not miss a beat even it's come down to the wire we're filming the the day before to get it done you know like we don't miss you know so that's been a really good learning experience for the both of us uh we have a great working relationship and you know that was my first cold cold lead you know and it's funny how because it kind of turned to my friend too like you know we're we're in the same we're we're both millennials so it's like we both get each other and everything else is seamless you know um but that's not to say you can't work with people from other generations but that's just a perk of that relationship so i also freelance for other studios i also worked for other wedding studios uh just you know being a shooter you know Uh, I typically don't like to edit for other people because I find that everyone has a way that they like things done. And if you, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting something away. However, when you felt, when you're doing work for other people in that, that capacity, it tends to take more, more of your time. And sometimes, you know, it might not be a good fit, you know, if if they're not trying to pay more for that, t- that time, you know, or some people will straight up take advantage of your time and try to squeeze in, oh, but can you do this? Okay. And it's like, you know, no, I'm, I'm just not going to edit anymore for you. I just can't. So, <laughs> you know, it's not a huge deal, but it's just something that I decided that I did not want to do. I'm not a freelance editor. I will shoot for you. You want something shot. If you want me to edit because you like the way I edit and you want me to, you give me the creative control because you like the way I put things together. And that's not to say that you can't have input because that's always required. Like, especially your client, you always want to please the client. That's, that's another thing. But most people that work with me work with me because they know what I do and they like the way I do it, you know? Uh, and you have to figure out what that, you have to figure out what your role is. Are you a creative person? that comes with a vision, helps someone craft a vision, or are you just a technician that comes in and just does, shows up, points and shoots, then takes orders the whole time to, to craft it, which is fine too. That's There's nothing wrong with that. But I will say, if you're on this side, you really should make sure you're being compensated properly for that. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so with Andrew Schultz, I want to move on to this, this story because, you know, my... Collaboration with him resulted in a paid trip to Europe to film for him, a 10-day trip of his the Europe leg of his tour. And that was really interesting because it's not something that I started the year out thinking I was going to do. You know, I was like, yeah, I'm starting this thing. Uh, maybe I'll get some, do some barbershops and do, you know, <laughs> who knows. But this is a testament to, to putting yourself out there. If people don't know you exist, you're done. You know, you're... you're you have to put yourself out there. You can't be scared. You can't be scared. You have to constantly send out those signals. So, this all started with a DM. It all started with a DM. I slid into the DMs. I seen he was coming to town. Hey, man, let's do something. Cool, we created something. Uh, and it was like a little just... It was just like a sort of a, a little highlight reel of, of his show here. And of that weekend. And... You know, I got great response. I got a great response on Instagram. 
and because I could see all the comments, I was like, oh wow, it's kind of cool. People are commenting and, and showing love, and and so I'm like, that was cool. I I did something cool. I have it for my portfolio, and I wasn't doing anything else that weekend anyway. So it was nice to be able to collaborate create something valuable with someone that I respected so with that being said I didn't expect anything beyond that I wasn't like okay now I'm gonna be his his uh, his guy because he kind of already had someone that that manages a lot of his, uh, his the video side of his th of his stuff um, but a few months later he had his tour going to Europe and he hits me up the week prior <laughs> he's like look man uh, really need another guy to come on and, and shoot and I kind of want you to be the point point man and, and sort of direct and take charge in the video space uh, for this for this project and I said cool let's do it so I mean that's not the real ver the real version is I'm on the phone he tells me that my eyes light up and I say I gotta call you back because I have to check in with you know my family I have a family you can't just I can't just leave home uh, at a moment's notice so there was that but then I did call him back boom we sealed the deal and there was a slight problem with my passport because I didn't have it it was expired so now I'm scrambling to get my passport I get my passport I go to the office actually you're supposed to be able to get it you know in two days so they go, okay, it's, it's coming express mail, be there Saturday. My flight was Monday night. I'm sorry, my flight was Sunday night. So it didn't come Sunday night. I mean, it didn't come Saturday in the mail. So I said, oh, man, I'm not going to make this flight. This guy's going to hate me forever. <laughs> so I'm here just making phone calls and, and just trying to see what I can do. And I said, and then I had to tell him straight up, look, man, my passport I went to the office. They told me this was what it was going to be. It wasn't that. If you're going to have to move my flight by for by one day, and I promise you, I will get my passport and we will be on our way. So he moves my flight to Monday night. And at this point, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm praying. I'm doing everything you can think of. Like I need to get on this flight. One, it's a great opportunity. Two, the last thing I want to do is burn a bridge with someone, and 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 create that. You know, so I'm like, all right, I need to first thing in the morning, I went out to the office again. I got the passport, but I get there and like, all right, uh, oh, you didn't get it yet. No, I didn't. I was supposed to get it Saturday. I was told this and that. OK, well, fill this out and uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm like, see what you can do. You better you better get that passport, man. So <laughs> they come back. All right. It turns out we can we can definitely print it out for you today come back at one mind you it's like 10 o'clock in the morning so i gotta wait three hours and i had my two-year-old with me so i had to go kill time and like entertain him because he was like not in a good mood that day so we went and did that so one o'clock i get the passport ready to go happy as ever and i didn't even pack yet or i like halfway packed so anyways i get the passport we i'm gone 10 days come back and it was a good experience it was a great experience i got to go to a few countries i haven't been to before some i have been before but not this capacity usually it's for dancing usually i'm i'm there to compete and it was interesting to go there as a filmmaker you know i i noticed like to travel as a dancer and now to travel as a filmmaker that was like it was it was it was definitely a blessing and it's not something that i take for granted and I will forever be grateful for that experience. So for that, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate that, man. Anyways, going to 2019, I really want to grow the wedding side of things. I do enjoy doing that. It's something that I really like, legit love to do. Uh, it's very stressful and taxing at times, especially because you're on your feet for like 12, 14 hour days just shooting. That doesn't even, we're not even talking about the hours it takes to edit something. Uh, however, the concept for me as being a filmmaker, right, and being able to be a part of someone's life story in a way, their love story, and being the one to tell it, not not just like I get to listen to you tell, like I help you, I craft it in video form, like document it, and then I have to craft it out. It's to me that's like it's always that's not gonna get old to me. So 
that and then also I have notes here. Remember, I have notes. So <laughs> I need I need notes. So and also for I want to say thank you to my fiance because she is a great supporter. She really pushes me to do to really reach for my goals and push for what I want. And she's also a great photographer and really inspires me, to be honest with you. This YouTube channel is actually a huge goal of mine for 2019, so to be consistent with it. I slacked in 2018, so many excuses, it's too much client work, uh, whatever. I don't know, think of any excuse, insert there, and that was me, All right? Thank you. Oh, sip. <sighs> Coffee's great. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now. Thank you for listening. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to this on Spotify or iTunes. And if you're catching this on the YouTube channel and you enjoyed this and you want to see more of my journey, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, it's all good. You can bounce out. I'm sure you'll find me again at some point. Uh, anyways, take care. And thanks for listening. <laughs>